How are you guys? Good. How are you? Thank you for spending your lunch time with me. I appreciate it. If it's okay with you, I'm going to sit down with you. My goal today is to just have a conversation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life, um, and then, but I really want to hear from you guys and hear what questions you might have and see if I can be helpful in the little bit of time that we get to share with you. Okay? So, that's me. This is my first day at Capital Group. Almost five years to the day. And that's my, that's my ID photo actually, that I have to take. I am currently, I'm an investment counselor at Capital Group in the private client division. What that really means in English is that I help people invest their money so that it lasts for the rest of their life when they're retired. I love what I get to do. It's a really great job. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it as we go through. But I want to really talk to you today about how I got to be where I'm at, which is a story of really an unconventional path. And that's the message that I want to give you guys today. So I'm going to take you first way back. This is, for me, this is like a project in my first grade, I think, for kinder. I was five and a half. My dad had to write it for me. I can't write. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of information on here, hilarious stuff for me to read. The main thing that I always picked up from this is the bottom line. What do you want to be when you grow up? And apparently I told my dad at that time I want to be a doctor and a basketball player. There's a lot of things crazy about that statement. Like, doctor, okay, I get that. I think my parents were kind of trying to track me in that path early on, it sounds like, but the basketball player part, I don't know where that came from. I didn't, I didn't play basketball growing up. I played soccer. So for me to even say that, is, it always trips me out. But I, I wanted to start here just to already set the stage. I think in the, in the movie industry, they call that foreshadowing, right? Just to set the stage for you in terms of like, you just never know where your life's going to take you. But I also wanted to tell you that it's never too early or too late to start dreaming about what it is that you might want to do, as crazy as it might seem. So now we'll fast forward. So I came to Poly in the ninth grade. Um, I'm not a lecturer, but I enjoyed my experience very much. I kind of came kicking and screaming. I didn't really want to come to Poly. I didn't see myself here. I didn't know what I was going to do here. But the four years that I spent here were four of the most formative years of my life. And I see that every single day, even to this day. I came here as a soccer player, but I left as a basketball player. Part of that is due to that man standing back there in the corner, Mr. Brad Hall, giving me the chance. But also, it's the poly community and the way we approach our sports that I even had the opportunity to try a sport that I was terrible at. I started high school and I was 5'9", 5'10", 115 pounds, wet probably, right? Like super skinny, couldn't make a left-handed layup to save my life. And I finished about 6'7", weighing probably still super skinny, like 180 something, 190. But I ended up getting recruited by a lot of schools and I chose to go to Penn. Um, mainly because it was the best of both worlds. I wanted to get a great education and play high level of basketball. And that's what I got from this. This picture is um, one, of my, one of my best games, one of my favorite games from college. You got to come back. For those of you guys that don't know, Penn is in Philly, so you play away all the time. I was never home. But my senior game was against USC over the holidays, and we smashed them. <laughs> and pretty much everybody from Poly came, and it was an amazing game. And my brother was running through the USC. He was going to USC at that time, so he was like running up and down the sidelines, like screaming every time. Like when I think when I made that dunk, he was going crazy. So, I so moving fast forward, I finished at Penn. Um, sorry, I left out of part. When I was at Penn, what I went to study was I was pre med. So again, foreshadowing, right? So I always had that as my kind of North Star. Even when I was at Poly, I, I felt like that's what I want to do. 
uh, yes, I wanted to play basketball, but I really was focused on becoming a doctor. And, and not just any doctor, a cardiologist. And so I was on track, did all my requirements, was getting ready to sit for the MCATs and do all that, and basketball just kept on kind of calling. I went to a camp, and the coaches were like, have you ever thought about playing pro? And I was like, nope, not really. Because I was just playing for fun. I was just having fun. Uh, but apparently I was, I was doing well enough to where some of the pro teams were starting to recruit me, one of them being the Lakers. They had started to kind of watch me my junior year in college and then followed me my senior year. And I went undrafted, but they called my agent and said they wanted me to come in and try out for the team. So that was 2003. I got to play with Shaq and Kobe and Carl Malone and Gary Payton, because this was the crazy year where everybody, all these Hall of Famers came to the team. And I'm here, little kid from small Pasadena Poly, grew up in LA. LA is my favorite team, the Lakers are my favorite team, and here I was grabbing rebounds for Carl Malone, or, you know, cracking jokes on the team airplane with Shaq. It was crazy. It was a crazy time. I ended up playing 10 years of pro basketball. I didn't expect to ever play that long. Every single year that I did play, I, I, was my, I would tell my parents it was going to be the last year I was going to play. Everybody was always pressing me like, oh, so when are you going to go back to medical school? And I was like, I'm kind of doing something cool, I think, but I'll probably start studying for the MCAT and go back to medical school next year. Next year turned into two years, turned into five years, turned into ten years. And ten years later, I won three championships in three different countries. This is France. This is Germany, and that was in Poland. And yeah, I never, I never really looked back. It was an amazing experience. I got to go to probably 50 cities in 23 different countries, and it was all because of basketball that took me there. Again, you just never know where your path is going to take you and how, you know, how you'll get to experience things. And I was just kind of following the path that was opening up in front of me, and basketball was kind of leading the way in that. The kind of coup de grace for me was getting to play in the London Olympics in 2012. Uh, you know, my family's from Nigeria originally. I'm first generation, me and my brother are first generation born here, grew up here, but we have those roots in Nigeria. And I was lucky that at the end of my career, I got what I thought was a crank call from the people that were recruiting professionals all over the world to come try out for the team. And at first I didn't even respond. I was like, ah, yeah. Because unfortunately Nigerian people are known for like kind of trying to steal money from people over the phone and all that stuff. Like, it's not good. So I was like, this is, not, this is not real. But it ended up being real. And I'm so grateful to my little brother, Eni, who I think some of you guys might have got to get to know a little bit through his design work. He was the reason, he's the reason that I even have these pictures and that I was involved in this. I wasn't going to go. Um, you know, I was having a difficult time in my life, in my career. I could see the end of the road for me, and I was feeling sorry for myself. My, my knees were hurt. Every game that I played, my knees would blow up to like three times the size, and I'd have to get like two syringes full of fluid drained out of them, and then cortisone shot in to be able to just like walk around. And I was like, this, this can't be right. This can't be how I'm gonna live the rest of my life. So I was just kind of on the couch thinking, what am I gonna do? And Eni was like, what are you talking about? Man, you better go try out for that team. <laughs> if nothing else, you get to go see China. They cut you, you go home. I'm like, that's true. I've never been to China. <laughs> and, that's how I went. and I ended up making the team, um, playing, you know, playing a veteran support role, and had the time of my life. And you know, and got to represent the country that my family is from, which was uh, uh, it's indescribable that feeling. I, I don't know, you know, no, nothing else that I've done. I've done. I've gotten to do a lot with basketball, but this was definitely the pinnacle. But the thing about these pictures that's always hard for me to look at is that, as happy as you see me there, I'm, I'm also super sad and down because I knew this was it. I knew I didn't have any more left in the tank, really. Everything I was doing was painful. Every single day that I was trying to push myself to do what I love to do, I could feel that it was coming to an end. And I didn't really have a plan on what my next step was going to be yet. 
I was still trying to figure it out. Full circle. So I came back home and after just kind of floating for a while and not knowing what I wanted to do. The only thing, as I was thinking about what it was that I might want to do, the main thing that came to me was I wanted to give back in the same way that others had given to me. And that all started here. You know, there's a coach here, very special coach to me, who didn't, who isn't here anymore. His name was Chris Smalls. And he, along with Coach Hall, took the time to pour into me everything that they had. And it's the only reason that I got to show you all those pictures before this. And so that was the only thing I knew I had to do was come back here and help out in the same way. And when I did that, this special place gave me the opportunity to actually work here um, as a teacher and a coach and just doing community outreach and interacting with all of you. Some of you in the room I got to, you know, got to meet and be with when you were middle schoolers. And now it's crazy to me you guys are done. But that's the nature of this business, I'm not sure. But so this was a pivotal moment for me because it helped me try to start to figure out what the next step could be in my life. While I was working here, I was having a lot of conversations still, trying to understand, figure out myself, and figure out what it is that made me tick, what I wanted to bring to the world, what kind of change I hoped to bring to the world. And as I was doing that, what I came to realize was that there was a couple things that I knew I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure I, had, I maximized the impact I had on the people around me. I loved education. I do love teaching. That's what I learned here and I felt that here. Finance is something that I found was critical for me. And then when I started to look out at the people around me, I saw like how much it was affecting their lives too. And I said, this is the area that I think I can really be very impactful in people's lives. Because what happens is you, you make money and it buys you some time. But when that money starts to run out, the decision making that you have to make, you have to do, becomes based on how much money you need. And that's never a good place to start to try to make decisions. But I started to see that happening to me as the money I'd made playing basketball started to come down. I was like, oh, I need a job, like now. <laughs> right? And that was terrible. And like for most people that happens way earlier than I was lucky that I got to kind of wait and figure things out slowly. But that's not the case for everybody. So my job really is to try to create, to educate and empower people to understand how to take care of the resources that they have to not ever get into that situation. The way I try to approach my job is using all the skills that I've built over the years to try to impact, again, lives as much as possible. So a lot of what I do is teach. I still teach. Now it's just really focused on this one area of my life. But a lot of times I'll, I'll talk to classes of students and that's at, uh, that's the Broncos, that's in, that's, those are college students, these are students in Pasadena area as well, in, the, in public schools that were in a group, in a nonprofit called Ideal Youth. And they came up to Capital Group and we talked about investing one-on-one. -on -one. And so I just try to take all these things that seem so complex and bring them to everybody in a way that they can actually that they can actually consume. I got the chance to come back to Poly and talk a little bit about what I'm doing now and what, what my path has been, just like I'm doing today. And I love being able to give back in that way. And I've been able to do it in the, in the sports community as well, which has been super fulfilling also. This is me at the Lakers training facility getting ready to talk to their G League team. And I put this picture in here to kind of finish it off, and I want to open it for questions. Just to show you that this journey that you're all on, you, you never know the directions it's going to take. I would have never thought that I would have been a Laker. If you would have asked me in ninth grade, like, oh, you think you're going to play for the Lakers? Like, no, hell no. What are you talking about? <laughs> I can't make a left-handed layup. <laughs> right? But you, there you are. And then if you would have told me when I was playing pro that I would have gone back and been able to be a part of the basketball community in this other way and still be involved and still have contact and still be in locker rooms and still 
be able to engage with the game that I love, but now do it from a cerebral capacity, I also wouldn't, I, I couldn't have written it. I wouldn't have known. And that for you guys, I just want you to, as much as you can, enjoy the journey. I know you hear it a lot, but it really is the truth. Go deep on the things that you care about, that you love, that you really feel passionate about. Don't worry about where it's gonna take you, but just actually be great at something. Like, be great at something and trust that you'll figure out, you know which way to go once the path opens up. But you need to start building that habit of mastery, I think, into everything that you do. Because from what you've seen, I hope you got the, you understood that like, I basically had to rebuild myself a couple times. The only way that I'm able to do that is because I learned early on what it takes to master something, what it means to be a rookie to humble yourself and come back down to the bottom and figure out how to get the, what the steps are to go where you want to go. And I think that's what you guys, this is the training ground for that. And it doesn't stop, it's always constant. But just trust in yourself that you'll, you'll be able to figure it out when it's your time. Okay? All right. What questions can I answer? Yeah. What? skills did you have to develop or what skills does someone have to develop to end up being great at something or master something? Huh. That's a great question. I think, you know, there's, there's like, it sounds cliche, but it's true. Like you have to be, your, persist, your persistence needs to be outstanding. You can't, nothing can stop you. That's a, and that is a skill, being able to just keep going, keep going, keep going, no matter the consequence, no matter the outcome. I think part of it is also embracing the process itself. Understanding that, like most people, I think, get focused on the outcome. Oh, we're going to win the championship. Oh, you know, I'm going to be uh, the top salesperson in my, in my firm, whatever the case may be. For me, I focus on the day, winning every day. Every practice. Did I play like I want to play in the game? Right? Every day that I go on get on the job, am I, did I did I make the touch points that I need to do? Did I impact as many lives as I could in this day? If I'm doing that, then I know that I'm moving moving the needle towards whatever the end goal is. You know? And I think that that for me is like a key skill for mastery. Any other questions? Uh, Kind of a big question. What, uh, from living abroad, what is like one of the most important things you learned from you know seeing other cultures and uh, that you have brought back and put into your professional life? Mm -hmm. I love that question. I think the main thing that I learned that I, I wish for all of you is to be able to see how small the world is. We're more alike than we are different, and there's, there's a lot to be learned from everybody that is not in this US context. It was, it was a eye-opening experience for me to be outside the country looking back. It was a difficult time. So my first station was in France. French people are a different situation by themselves. But then on top of that, in the US, we weren't very liked, right? This is Bush time. People were like, you, what? I wouldn't even say I was American sometimes because of the like, Right. It would be, they'd be so anti, mm -hmm. and that was that was telling for me. The other telling thing for me, I think, was um, a deeper sense outside of the U.S. There's a deeper sense of um, the self is tied to where you're from, your roots. Whereas in America, because I think the melting pot nature of our country, it's like there's that part is lost a little bit. So, easy example: Where are you from, Coco? California. Where are, you, where are you from? Where are you really from? And like, it took me a while to understand that question. In Europe, meant like Nigeria is where I'm really from. That's where my family's from, right? So when they were asking people that, they were asking, you know, what, where, where's the original? Where's the original person that made your family from? And that was, um, that was something that impacted me as well. I was like, oh, that's a different way to look at, at the whole situation, and what's important. For Regrets about 
about the choices you make. I try hard not to regret anything. I think I think every piece, every mistake, every or mistake, everything that I did that along the way, it played a major part in who I am today. It was part of the learning process. So that's the perspective I always try to take on. If I had to pick one, I would say I regret not being more reckless. Like not taking more chances. Shoot my shot more. Bet on myself more. Earlier. Now I figured it out. And I'm like, it's too late. I'm not playing anymore, right? <laughs> But like it's interesting because that uh, the mindset that that build that sports I think builds into you um, in the regular world is it like it pro it's propelling me a lot faster than I think. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's no ball at work, but every basically everything that it takes to be a great basketball player, athlete, musician, great at anything, I think translates into the day-to-day -day work. So I came in and I was, I mean, I was, it was exactly like being here in ninth grade. I was the lowest of the totem pole, and I was a rookie, and I didn't know anything, and I was starting from scratch. And I was sitting on the desk, and I'm like, information just coming at me. But what I, you know, I took the same approach I did here: come early, stay late, listen to everything, read everything. I was just consuming as much content as I could, and over time, it just started to make sense. You start building the patterns in, just like just like we're playing. You know, when you start out on a team, and if the team's been together, you have like 50 play, right? You have 50 plays that you have to learn. The first couple weeks is terrible, but then you see enough of it, you're like, oh, I know where I'm supposed to go. I know my spot now, I know these two spots, now I know all the spots, and it just starts to build on itself over time. But I think it's really about the commitment to being the best you can every single day. That's the part that comes into play every, every like, with every step, I think, from, and that comes straight from the sports side of it. Great, thank you.